care to stand, they're there for you. We're going to get started here in just a moment, and we will begin with a presentation of colors from the Los Angeles Police Department's Van Nuys Division Cadets under the command of Sergeant Larry Cole. That will be followed by the, our choir here. And after that, we will have the posting of colors and an invocation. respond. As a nation, we became united more than ever. <clears throat> we all put our selfish needs aside and looked to those who we could help. We sent money, supplies, manpower, and people who hadn't prayed in many years stopped and prayed for those who were suffering that day. We all focused on what was important and we cherished those who we had taken for granted. Now, 12 years later, where are we at? Are we as united as we were 12 years ago? Are we still helping those in need? Are we praying for those who are suffering? Do we take our loved ones for granted? Do we call our parents, hug our children, and tell our spouses daily that we love them. Today I'd like to challenge each of us to remember how you felt that day, 9-11-2001. How your hearts went out and you wanted to give support and help your fellow man. Today I challenge you, one hour, one hour a month, to serve your community, your fellow man. And I guarantee in that one hour, you will be blessed 10 times more than those you bless. You can go to your local hospitals, churches, call your council members and say, I want to help. And they'll find something for you to do. Let's not wait for another tragedy to unite and be who God created us to be. Please bow with me and pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this amazing day for those that have gathered to remember those that we lost. We pray that you are with their families and just help them as they continue in life. We also pray, Lord, for the 19 members of the Grand Night Mountain Hotshot crew that lost their lives recently. We also pray for our fallen brothers here in the LAFD, Mario Martinez, Jeffrey Johnson, and Matthew McKnight. We pray that you be with all their families and friends and just give them peace and comfort. We pray for our leaders as the our new mayor, the city council, as they make decisions daily on our great city. We pray for all our first responders, Lord, that they answer the 911 calls bravely and help those in need. Father, we just thank you for your blessings and pray that you'll be with us here today. In your name we pray. Amen.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome and thank you all for being here tonight. <clears throat> That's actually all I wanted to say, but they told me I had to say a little bit more than that. So I will. I hope you'll join us tonight and join your Los Angeles Fire Department in accomplishing the goals of this event. And we have three goals for tonight. One, that we remember 9-11. Two, that we celebrate our victory over those who have sought to harm us. And three, that we teach our youth about what happened on that fateful day and what has happened since. It was, it was suggested I tell a little bit of my 9-11 story, so bear with me. But on 9-11, 2001, three other firefighters and I were the first we're on the first American Airlines flight out of Los Angeles International Airport to Washington, D.C. We were on a work-related trip to Virginia. We boarded our plane as usual, and I called home as the plane began to back away from the boarding ramp, as I always do. When I called home, I was being told by my family that two planes had flown in to the World Trade Center. I was then told that the towers were falling as we were speaking on the phone. And at the same time, our plane was backing away from the boarding gate. Our plane soon stopped and pulled back into the gate. The captain of the plane told us that there had been a problem with air traffic control and we could remain in our seats. Hopefully we would be departing soon. A few minutes later we were told that we should depart the plane and we would be notified when our flight would be rescheduled. The airline thought that the delay might be an hour or two. We still weren't sure what was going on. I'll never forget one of the flight attendants was very distraught, had to be escorted off the plane by other flight attendants. I surmise now that she had been told one of her loved ones had been aboard one of the hijacked planes. Myself and the other firefighters found a TV in a closed airport bar and we turned it on. Now leave it to firefighters to find a closed airport bar at seven o'clock in the morning, but we did. And 24 hours later, all four of us as members of the Los Angeles Fire Department's urban search and rescue team were on the ground at Ground Zero in New York searching for survivors. We stayed there for nearly two weeks searching day and night helping the FDNY and the NYPD in any way we could. Others from the LAFD joined us back there in New York, helping out at New York fire stations, assisting with search and rescue, and helping those who are grieving. I remember that two days later, on September 13th, I asked one of my friends on the USAR team how he was doing, how he was holding up. He said he was okay, and he added, that's one heck of a way to spend my birthday, though. I agreed, it was one heck of a way to spend his birthday. My birthday is also September 13th. The firefighter I was speaking with was someone I grew up with. We'd known each other for nearly 23 years, long before the fire department, long before that career had entered our minds. We'd been friends the whole time. We played football together, ran track, attended classes. We never knew we shared the same birthday until that, September 13th. That's my story of 9-11, or part of it anyway. More importantly, I remember some other things, and I hope you do too. I remember that regardless of politics, religion, race, or any other labels, we all came together as Americans. Amidst our tragedy, we found power in our diversity, our spirits were strengthened, our resolve was steeled. We were all Americans, and we still are today. And although there were scars on our land in Shanksville, at the Pentagon, and at the World Trade Center, our national fabric was made whole. That's how I remember 9-11. I want to ask each and every one of you, how do you remember 9-11? What is your story? From that fateful day to today, 
we have had to remain vigilant. We've had some heart-wrenching losses. And while we are not perfect, we have achieved many victories. Celebrate our victories. You see, acts of cowardice on the part of others led to American acts of courage, victory. Acts of indignity led to American acts of honor, victory. Injustice led to American acts of kindness, victory. By turning 9-11 into a celebration, we do achieve victory. That's why I celebrate 9-11. I ask all of you to join us in that celebration. And what about the future? Personally, I was recently prioritizing some things that I want to accomplish in my life, and it got me thinking that those children born this year will reach retirement age in about 2078. Think about that for a moment. What are we going to teach those children about what happened on 9-11? My hope is that we teach them that American strength truly comes from our diversity. That while people flee some countries, America is still a land that people flock to. And I truly hope that you teach them, each of you teaches them, your 9-11 story. And we've come here tonight to memorialize those who died on 9-11 and in the subsequent war and honor those who have served at home and abroad since that date. And as Abraham Lincoln said in the greatest of all speeches, it is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. At Gettysburg, he also said that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. So in closing, I ask that you remember 9-11, that you celebrate our victory, that you teach your story of 9-11 to carry on the legacy. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining our Los Angeles Fire Department Memorial. for this 9-11 Memorial event. Our 9-11 Memorial Coordinator, Ms. Carrie Conjoin. Thank you, Chief, and thank you to all the firefighters who have worked for the last several weeks to help get this organized. Captain Berkeley, Chief Reyes, Chief Butler, and it's my job to thank all of you tonight and to thank all of our benefactors whose name is on the wall and all the benefactors who are on the name on the back of your program. We have several benefactors sitting here. Jim and Char, I can just go around the block here and thank all of you for making this evening possible. As long as you come, we'll keep doing this and we'll never forget. We thank you for remembering that these are the men and women who risk their lives daily for us. Thank you. This was conceived by Joe Lanza, a resident of Sherman Oaks, and myself in 2002. And we were able, through Joe Lanza, able to acquire a piece of the World Trade Center from Joe's brother who worked in New York at the time. And then we went and looked for benefactors who graciously helped us build the memorial. So the, oh, they built this memorial before you organized this? Um... Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, the memorial was built and dedicated December 11th, 2004, and ever since then we've had a service on September 11th to commemorate and remember 9-11. I noticed there was no uh, addressing the motivation of the attacks. Was, is that intentional, or you, you just don't uh, talk about it anymore? There was nothing intentional. People that are asked to come and speak, speak what they'd like to speak. We don't control what people say. So whatever people want to say, if they're elected officials, fire department or police, or myself, 
people allowed to speak from what we want to say. Right. But d d do you uh, intentionally not have someone speak about the, the we motivation don't, we of don't the attack? We don't intentionally or not intentionally have anyone speak about anything or not speak about anything. We ask people to leave politics at home and remember the day. Isn't, isn't politics a part of the, uh, the ongoing war on terror? The, the world is all about politics. We try to leave our politics at the door. As Quincy Jones said when they made We Are the World, leave your ego at the door. We're working towards a cause. So here, we of course remember what happened. And we always remember those that lost their lives. And we do our best to honor those that have lost their lives and those who risk their lives daily for you and for me.